mean, things that are going Jewish customs in the United States today are really what are known as Ashkenazic customs or Eastern European Jewish customs from Poland and Russia and the Ukraine and so on. So with each successive immigrant group, you got some variations, not on the text from which the reading is done. The Haggadah remains the same and the obligation to eat bitter herbs and to have a lamb shank bone present at the Seder, that remains the same. But the, the additional foods and the additional prayers and songs and additional readings varied from Jewish culture to Jewish culture around the world. And as those groups came to the United States, they each brought those customs with them. You mentioned something like two million East European Jews came to the United States by the 1920s. Were their practices respected by the broader Christian society in the U.S.? Well, I, I don't think that there was a broad tolerance and acceptance for Jewish practice until after the Second World War in this country. I think that the discovery of what had happened during the Holocaust softened what had been a fairly widespread, not not malignant, but but widespread social anti-Semitism in the United States. It was never as bad as what it was in Europe. But I think that the traditional practices that each of the Jewish cultures brought to uh, the United States were kept very much at home and and in family life. It's in in the second half of the uh, 20th century, you began to see the emergence of the Seder into the public realm. And, and so today, there are a number of Jewish organizations that actually have public seders that they co-celebrate with Christian organizations at churches or in synagogues or, or Jewish community centers. When do you remember that the Passover Seder and Haggadah started having an impact on your life and, and the way you saw things? Aha, uh -huh. I would say for me, it probably began to have some meaning for me in my middle teenage years, um, probably around age 15 and 16 when I became cognizant that um, African Americans were struggling for the same kinds of rights and the same freedoms. It at least seemed to me that way um, that my own ancestors had in, in Egypt. And I began to see that the story of freedom and you know, the obvious connection between uh, Hebrew slavery and, and black slavery became clear to me as, as I became conscious of the civil rights movement. In my lifetime, I've, and particularly because of this custom we have of, of bringing additional text to read uh, beside the Haggadah, which, as I explained before, is a, a fixed text which can't be edited or changed, but you can bring additional readings to it. I've become cognizant at various times of the parallel between, say, ab uh, abusive children or battered wives, that there's lots of kinds of, uh, lots of different kinds of enslavement. Each year now that I go to the Seder, I find myself thinking about one or another kind of bondage, human bondage, that um, can afflict us. And I, at least for one or two days, I'm mindful of how valuable it is to be free and how important it is to conduct ourselves in a way that allows us to continue to be free. Historian Michael Felberg talked with VOA's Andrew Barrick about the Jewish celebration of Passover and the traditional Seder.